Ooh, okay, this is a bit of a different video. It's about something that I noticed going on in the backyard right in the middle of winter, which is normally very cold, yet we had a bubble of warm temperatures, and it seemed to confuse Mother Nature, and especially one redback spider who thought it was a very early spring. I can show you masses of figures here that do detail the temperatures that are going on. The hot temperatures were happening in the latter part of the month, but if I read this next passage, it explains everything. In July, the average temperature of the sea is still 18 degrees C. July 2019 saw eight consecutive days where the temperature reached over 20 degrees C. In fact, 12 days at all in the month of July in Sydney, where the temperature was 20 degrees C+. Plus. 20 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit is 68 degrees. And to get your head around Celsius, think of it like this as 20 degrees being in the middle, not too hot and also not too cold. Zero degrees Celsius is freezing and 40, that's double 20, degrees Celsius is 104 degrees Fahrenheit and I classify that as stinking hot. What tends to happen with redback spiders in the middle of winter is they will recluse into their spider nests and I've got a great example of this that I shot in the middle of winter a few years earlier of redback spiders that were hiding out underneath school seats. These spiders love the warmth and they will see the school seats as the perfect place to hide out during winter time where they can get some warmth as the seats sit in the sun but they tend not to do any drop down lines or set up their webs in the middle of winter. Redback spiders can easily hibernate for many months and don't need to feed. If you know where to look and you're prepared to dig around in a spider nest you can arouse the redback spiders from their slumber in the middle of winter. And what you find is they tend to be in a fairly sleepy condition. Yes, it's curious those very common aluminium school seats present to a redback spider the perfect home. And it just adds an extra element of excitement when you go to school in Australia. I did speak about this redback spider at the back steps in another video when I was clearing out all the baby spiders midwinter. But at that time, I didn't understand how strange July was. I remember I walked around the suburb and I also noticed there were other redback spiders setting up webs, but nothing as substantial as what I saw going on at the back step. To understand what was going on there, I used my iPhone to get a photograph up inside the metal pole that is at the back step. And what I'm looking for in those photographs is egg sacs of the spider, but I know it wouldn't be an established nest because I walk past this place every day at my house. This spider seemed to be triggered by the fact that we had this bubble of warm air. But I think it was using this metal pole as a nice warm recluse area to hide out during winter time. I could make a very strong assumption that these redback spiders are triggered by certain environmental cues. And this bubble of hot temperatures in the middle of winter was saying to the spider, hey, get ready, it's the next spider season. So for me to understand what's going on here, I used those Arlo security cameras. I spoke about this in another video and I cleared the web away from the zone. I could see where the spider was going to remake its web, but this spider was up against what was still fairly cold nights. And what the Arlo cameras captured was a redback spider that was virtually moving in slow motion. I have to really speed the video up to make any sense of what this spider is doing. Around this spider nest was also some other activity. Slugs were moving around. In fact, it's quite weird what slugs do at night. Okay, but because we're in the middle of winter, I wasn't seeing the dynamic critter action that you would see if you got into spring or summer. And so the spider is setting up its webs and doing its thing that it does because it thinks it's in spider season. But really, there's nothing much out to capture unless you want to have a nice slug for dinner. And from what I've seen over and over when redback spiders set up their webs is they will reject eating snails and slugs. As for why this happens, I don't understand. As we're watching the redback spider in extended view, doing its thing in the middle of winter, to paint a bigger picture of what was going on in the middle of 2019 being winter time in Australia, we had a big rat infestation going on and it took a long time to resolve that issue. It was also a very dry time and that would be the lead up to what became a really, really bad fire season across many parts of Australia at the end of 2019 and it rolled over to 2020 as well. 
It wasn't until months after this July period I started to see headlines and people speaking about this very warm bubble of temperature that just didn't happen where I lived in Australia. It was also happening in other parts of the world during July 2019. So sure, you had some people jumping onto the climate change bandwagon saying, oh, the planet's on fire, blah, blah, blah. Rarely do you hear these people explain some of the big cycles that happen in nature. Some of these cycles happen over thousands of years, hundreds of years, or maybe short periods of time. There's one very important cycle that you hear people ignore, and it's called the solar cycle. It's an 11-year cycle, and curiously, and this won't make any sense to the bubble of hot temperature we had, is that the sun was at a time when it was transitioning from cycle 24 to 25, and it's the most quiet time in the sun, the least amount of sunspots was going on, when this red-back spider decided to think it was coming into summer, when in reality it was the middle of winter. Even though we had this bubble of warm air during the day, at night time the temperature did fall to between 8 to 12 degrees Celsius, and that's still pretty mild. Normally, this time of year in the middle of winter, in Sydney you would be getting, let's say, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius, and in those temperatures, red-back spiders do absolutely zero. Maybe this climate chaos was caused by the old butterfly in Japan that decided to flap its wings at the wrong time, and look what's happened. Okay, let's move on from redback spiders doing weird things in the middle of winter to nice furry creatures that live in my backyard, and they are called possums. Now, I showed a possum in a recent video, and there was a bit of a comment fight started up about, is it a possum or is that an opossum? Generally speaking, opossums reside in North America. There are many species of opossums, and possums reside in Australia, and there are also multiple species of those little critters. In my backyard, there are two species of possum that are quite common. One of them is easily seen, and that's the brush tail possum. I've got lots of video of brush tail possums doing all sorts of things. The other possum is called a ring tail possum. They are smaller, they are cuter. And they are fairly elusive and difficult to video. They move very fast through the trees. And ringtail possums are beautiful creatures if you have the opportunity to get up nice and close to one and see the way they operate. Both these possums are protected species in Australia. You cannot keep them as pets. Now I've done some reading up on the confusion about opossum versus possum. And what seems to be going on is that people identify opossums and they say that's a possum and this is happening especially when they talk about the virginia opossum from the wikipedia pages that make me an instant expert i can see that both opossums and possums are marsupials they both carry their young in a pouch but i can really speak long and hard on possums because i see them all the time in my backyard And I think I could be right in saying that they're a fair bit cuter versus an opossum, which to me does look like a bit of a scary critter. There is a love-hate relationship with possums because they can get into the roof of your home and cause a fair bit of chaos. But I think the trick with possums is if they've got somewhere to live, they will not see your roof as a home. And it's when their habitat is removed or their favourite tree is gone well, they will always cite your roof cavity as the perfect place to live. Possums are nocturnal animals. They're nighttime creatures. They are territorial. You'll often hear them screeching and doing strange things at night. They live up in the trees. If you've got keen eyes, you can see the areas where they have their nests, although it is called something else, and at the moment I can't think of that name. But all in all, possums are fairly awesome. I know people in New Zealand will argue the opposite because in New Zealand they are actually a major pest. So, yes, apart from looking at spiders through those strange security cameras, it is fun to watch what the possums get up to and watch them eat. But maybe the best thing to do when we'll finish with this in this video is to, apart from watching them eat, listen to the sound of them munching their food. It just sounds so awesome.